Hello everyone, in this video I want to talk about a topic that's been on my mind a lot lately. I can't stop thinking about it, therefore I must discuss it, I must talk about it, and I think it would be the perfect time right now actually. The topic I'm talking about is freedom of speech and how the restrictiveness of it could be the demise of America, total destruction. If you don't have any accountability for the future, lack of planning, what do you expect is going to happen? So without further ado, let's move forward and get this going. First, let's take a look at why we have freedom of speech and how long it's been implemented for. The United States isn't the first to invent it. Freedom of speech has been dated back to ancient Greece. In 1791, there was a First Amendment, along with the Bill of Rights, which provides Americans a free speech that is not restricted by the government. Over the last few years, the Supreme Court they had to make a few changes, though. So a lot of the changes were involved with the language that people use, of course. If you want to start screaming at someone on the street and harassing them, then that's no longer freedom of speech. Of course, they had to make all these little changes with specific details to make people's lives just a lot easier to have some sort of protection. If you're threatening someone, plagiarizing, slandering, or if you just downright commit a crime, that's no longer protected speech. Although freedom of speech is out of the government's grasp, it's no longer the case on social media. That's not exactly how things are going. There's a lot of control that social media companies have. You wouldn't really have in the real world. And what you're actually able to say online, because of course, how do you communicate if you're not on social media? You'd communicate through email. Maybe you would communicate on a smaller type of app like Skype or FaceTime. But at the end of the day, social media companies like YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, all the big companies, maybe even Facebook, all of that, right? You're going to be communicating with all kinds of people throughout the world, in your own country, in your own state. These companies are private. It gives them the right to kick off anybody that doesn't agree at the terms of service. I think that they're allowed to do that. But then also, there's a line. But we need to figure out how people are going to be able to communicate if they're no longer able to talk on these different public squares. You must say, okay, you have the president that's speaking on Twitter. If you get kicked off on Twitter, are you actually able to see what the president's talking about then? I mean, you can hear about it from other journalists, maybe read an article, but if you're not able to go on Twitter and see it for yourself, it's not really right. And you can't even comment on it. You can't share your opinion. That's not very fair. They say that certain people are too crazy to use their site or they shouldn't be on social media without even committing a crime. I don't understand that without even doing something that's illegal. I don't get that. And even if you did do something that's illegal in our society that we have, it's that if you go to jail, then you're going to go do your time, you think about it, and then afterwards, you have a second chance. It's not... That if you go to jail, you get out, everybody's going to be mad at you for the rest of your life. That's not how we've designed our society. We have it made so that you can have second chances in your life. Why is there no such thing online that you can't have second chances? Or not even jail, just if you've made a mistake. Maybe you said something wrong or you've done something horrible. Kind of like Logan Paul when he was in the suicide forest. That wasn't the best experience for him publicly, but as time went on, people were able to forgive him and he had a second chance. I don't see that with a lot of people that are conservative, people that are labeled conspiracy theorists. Back to companies and them having the right to kick off people because of them disagreeing with the terms of service or them just not going along with their program for being on their site. Okay, that's okay. But the whole entire thing that really disturbs me is companies like Twitter, companies like Instagram, they don't actually state what their terms of service are. They're not specific on what that is, what you can't say. Therefore, if you don't know the rules, when you get banned, you're like, what's going on? They don't tell you a reason. Some people have a lot of problem communicate and figure out why they were kicked off. Why am I kicked off? They try to ask on emails, they try to call, 
nobody is answering that work in these offices because they don't care. They're used to it by now. They're like, everybody's getting kicked off in silence. Who cares? Wow. For example, a company will say they won't allow hate speech, but they won't give any examples on what the guidelines are for that. They won't say what the rules are, what you can't say. How do you know? How do you know what hate speech is if there's no definition that everybody knows? Nobody knows. I mean, one thing that's hateful to somebody might not be hateful to the next person. That's just how life is. People can be very mean. They can be cruel. That's how life is. If every single person was, like, super happy every single second and the world was sunshine and rainbows, I mean, that's kind of cool to think about. But also, how would you life at the same time? How are you going to get through life and do things without any sort of hardship, any sort of experience to go through where it's actually going to be difficult for you so that you could try to learn different things and you can build as a person? Another problem is that most of these are massive monopolies that are working together. I wouldn't say the assumption that they're colluding, but a lot of people are talking about that and saying that they are because of a lot of different incidents that have happened. If you do a little bit of research, you can go do that yourself. I don't want to talk about that right now. I don't think that's probably the safest topic to be talking about. With almost no reputable alternatives, a lot of the public that are moving over, they're going to all tech. Instead of dealing with big tech and the censorship, they're moving to all tech platforms like Gab, Minds, Bitchu. They all allow freedom of speech. You can say whatever you want in the bounds of that being legal. You can say whatever and not be kicked off because of some made up thing. It becomes a massive problem when these corporate monopolies begin deplatforming individuals without any reason. They feel they don't even have to give you a reason because they're too good for that. You're too good to give anyone a reason why they're getting kicked off. That doesn't make any sense. It's very frustrating. If that ever happened to me, I would feel very sad. I wouldn't enjoy that. I would feel that's kind of a form of torture and tormenting somebody in a way for not giving a reason not stating why you're doing that if they're breaking the terms of service fine at least state what they did what did they break in the terms of service state that tell them give reasons this is the reason we must push for freedom of speech in all aspects of our lives whenever we start giving up on that then your life it's just going to go down, 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 downhill. That's why I don't want to give this up. That's why I think this is very important. I wouldn't be making videos every other day if I didn't think this is important. I really do, honestly. And I think that when we start giving this up, even if it's online, all of a sudden you can't talk about what you feel, what you want to happen in the country, uh, small things, what you just think about maybe a certain celebrity, or just stating facts. America would be much better off without having its people fearing for the next thing that they have to say. I believe that logical and rational conversations are how you get ethical results. On that note, I'm going to head out, but go check out some of my other videos. There's a lot going on there. I'm going to have another video coming very shortly, so I'll check you next time.